Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from California. Speaker, this time I have to yield three minutes to the former presidential candidate from Surfside, Texas, Mr. Paul. Gentleman is recognized for three minutes. I, I thank the gentleman. I ask the uh, unanimous consent that I re can revise and extend my remarks. Without objection, so uh, right. Thank you. I, I rise in opposition to the rule and the underlying uh, legislation. Um, it uh, doesn't take a whole lot to convince me that we're on the wrong track uh, with this type of legislation. And at great risk of being marginalized, I want to bring up uh, a couple issues. One is that uh, if one were to look uh, for guidance in the Constitution, there's no uh, evidence that we have the authority to take funds from uh, one group of Americans and transfer it to another group who happen to need something. And a moral argument is it's not right to do so. Why should successful Americans be obligated to take care of those who have made mistakes? But those two arguments are rather weak arguments, so I will try to talk a little bit about uh, economics. I, I think what we're doing here today and what we've done here for the last week has is, is been essentially a distraction. Uh, we're, we're talking about transferring funds around uh, 15, uh, 15 billion dollars. It's been authorized. It's, it's been uh, designed to do some other uh, interventions that were unnecessary in the car industry. In, in a way, uh, this probably could have been done by unanimous consent, but there's been a lot of talk and a lot of publicity and a lot of arguments going back and forth about the bailout for the car companies. And it is, of course, very important. But in the scheme of things, you know, what does $15 billion mean anymore? Especially it's been authorized. The big thing is, is, is the big bailout, the $8 trillion, the unlimited amount, and what we've been doing for the past six months. We are on the road to nationalization. In many ways, we're in the midst of nationalization without a whimper. There's no real talk about it. I mean, we've essentially nationalized the insurance companies, the mortgage companies, the banks, and uh, medical care is moving in that direction. And now the car companies are going to be uh, run by a car czar uh, from, from this Congress. I mean, it is such an embarrassment. It is such an insult to us who believe in freedom, who believe in sound money and limited government. It's such an insult to the whole idea of what made America great. And this is what it's come to, bailout after bailout after bailout, and nobody even calls it what it really is. It's nationalization of our industries. You know, in, in many ways, Harry Truman was a much more honest person. You know, he said we should nationalize the steel industry, and he did. Fortunately, we still had a little bit of, uh, uh, of common sense in our courts, and they say, hey, you're going too far. But that's what we're doing here. We're nationalizing, but it's always for good purposes. And we are always going to do good for this group, but you never ask the question, how much harm have you done to the other group? And that's, the, that's, what, we, uh, that's what we ought to be doing. We ought to really find out what this is costing. You know, as much as I strongly believe in the free society and I can defend it from an economic viewpoint, I also know where we are and where we ought to go, and I do believe in transition. Time has expired. Field, my friend, an additional 30 seconds. I, I believe in a transition, and that is if we need a bailout for the car companies, even though I don't like the idea, if you could pay for it, take it out of these hundreds of billions of dollars running the American empire around the world, cut it, bring it home and spend it here. But this running up these deficits, it's going to do us in, and we're working on the collapse of the dollar. That's what you better pay attention to. So pay attention. This is a lot more important than this little $15 billion. To me, it's been a gross distraction of the great harm we've done in the past six months. Gentleman from New York. I continue to reserve. If this were a dictatorship, it'd be a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> Just so long as I'm the dictator. 